Previously, we've talked about insulating your greenhouse. But there's one other thing we can do to help in being able to use our greenhouse during the winter, and that's to try to take advantage of the heat that builds up during the day, somehow hold on to that heat, store that heat to be released later on uh, at night to help heat our greenhouse. And when we're talking about that in the context of a greenhouse, we you'll usually hear the terms heat sinks. We're talking about you know heat sinks, and all that is is something that's going to store heat to be released later on. Now, typically, the number one thing you'll hear being talked about with heat sinks or barrels filled with water. Now that's a passive type of heat sink. The, there's nothing for you to do. There's no, you know, there's no system to be put together. There's no you know, electrical controls. There's no timers. There's nothing involved. You just fill a barrel with the water, set it in the greenhouse, let it heat up during the day, and then that heat will be released back at night. That's a passive system. Now water is the best, but there's other kinds. You know, building Building walls of stone, you know, the stone wall or the stone floor works great. Um, it, as far as the effectiveness of materials as heat sinks, wood is about the lowest. Then we've got earth, which is similar. Um, concrete, rock, stone, you know, those come in next. Um, water is three times better than stone or concrete and six times better than wood. So, you know, one 55-gallon drum of water is going to hold as much as, say, 17 cubic feet of concrete or rocks, and two gallons of water, just two gallon jugs of water, is going to be the equivalent of 80 pounds of rock. So, for the size, you know, the container, a small container of water is going to do so much more than a huge pile of rocks. You know, even though you know, water is a great heat sink, and even though we could line it, the entire north wall of our of our greenhouse, if the sun's if this is south and the sun's coming in, the entire north wall is lined with water barrels. That's going to do great, and we would have to fill the entire greenhouse with rocks just to get the same effect as that one wall of barrels. However, if you're in a cold climate, you would almost need to fill the entire greenhouse with barrels just to be able to keep it, you know, heated and usable, and of course, there would be, you know, no room for your plants. So, we're not trying to get a complete solution with these barrels, but we're trying to, to get enough to take the edge off, enough to, to make a big enough difference that you can then afford to use a small electric heater or a small propane heater, not spend a ton of money heating by using the, you know, the passive heat, the passive solar collection, the heat sinks in your greenhouse. Now, you don't just have to have barrels along the wall. You know, there's other ways you could do it. I mean, barrels are still the best, but let's say, for example, you have some shelves that you work with. Well, instead of building legs, or instead of just having the legs holding up those shelves, why don't we, you know, put barrels underneath there? You know, have the barrels hold up your shelves, or at least fit under those shelves. Typically, you'll always want at least the southern facing parts of the barrels to be painted black, that way they're going to be able to absorb as much as possible. If you're using reflective uh, coating, say we've, we've, like we talked about with insulating, if you've used the foam insulation along the north wall and we've used the kind with the reflector on it, well now we could go ahead and paint the entire barrels black. You, you lose a little bit of the white and the reflector you know, bouncing around in the greenhouse, but you get a little bit more bang for the buck as far as is heating that water. When you try to figure out, you know, how much, you know, you're going to need, basically there's a rule of thumb, depending on where you're at, I mean, it depends on where you're at in the U.S., but between two gallons of water to five gallons of water for the exposed surface area of your glazing. Now, if we've insulated with a bubble wrap and two inch insulation all along the north wall and maybe halfway up that, the, the roof on the north side, maybe even did the northern portions of our east and our west end walls, we've got less that we have to put into the equation. So, you know, a six by eight greenhouse that's just completely uncovered, no insulation at all, that's going to require 970 gallons of water. So, by insulating that north wall and as much as possible of the roof and the east and west walls, we can cut that down to maybe three to four hundred gallons of water, and that's only six barrels. 
Now six barrels are going to fit in there a lot better you know, than twice that and at least leave you some room to work, especially if we're putting shelving on top of those six barrels. Now another thing that works great is aquaponics systems. If you're using aquaponics, your tanks, all of those growing tanks and your, your return tanks and your fish tanks, that's all water that can be used to help you know, hold heat for you inside the greenhouse.